Good morning, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For all of you who are joining us live, congratulations, you're founding, you found some shade. It might last through about halfway through the sermon. So if you're feeling that burning heat, it's a reminder from God that you, no, no. Um, <laughs> not that way. For those, so if, if for those of you joining, hopefully you have your uh, bulletins, the song sheets. Uh, and grab the communion. The offering plates are also over there, but make sure you have your communion. So you're all set and ready to go. For those of you joining us online, welcome. Uh, hopefully you have uh, a candle lit to remind yourself of God's presence, as well as just to set aside the space and the time. Uh, and if you are joining us for communion, please make sure you have those elements handy as well. Uh, a couple of things as we uh, kick off. Uh, worship this day. Uh, want a reminder for our members that there is a quarterly meeting that is coming up April 27th at 7 p.m. There will be more links and stuff like that that will be coming out with that stuff. Also, the big other big thing is uh, Pause Cafe is um, our, this is our month, and the deadline for all of the uh, offerings is tomorrow. So if you've, you have something and you'd really like to uh, uh, share that uh, and bring it in. Just bring it in tomorrow morning into the office hours. Thank you to everyone who's brought things. I mean, the table is loaded and everything else like that. Um, Janice's jar, for those of you who are here, Janice's infamous Pause Cafe jar is in the, in the gathering area there if you have something you want to drop in there as well. Um, so, uh, but that'll be tomorrow. And thank you to everyone and your generosity that will help uh, impact other people's lives positively. And so, let us begin. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! You're getting there towards the end. All right. As we turn, you know, it, this is a season of remembrance of baptism. And so, uh, for those of you at home, if you have some water, for those of you here, no, you'd splash each other. I know how this works. But a reminder of the gift of baptism. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God now and forever. Amen. He is risen. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Be with you all. Oh, 
Let me try that again when it actually goes out. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now the whole group of these who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let's read from Psalm 133 responsively. How good and how pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head, flowing down upon the beard. Upon the beard of Aaron, flowing down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon flowing down upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, live forevermore. Our gospel for this Sunday of Easter comes to us from the 20th chapter of the gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, to you O Lord. Lord. Now, in the gospel of John, this is the evening uh, you know, of Easter. The women went, found the tomb empty, uh, the, uh, went and told the disciples. J uh, John and Peter came, found it empty. They left. Mary Magdalene had a meeting with, you know, had an, an experience of meeting Jesus. This is the evening. When is evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Judeans, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. Be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. 
the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now, uh, recently I had uh, an opportunity to be in Walgreens, and as I was wandering through, I saw this guy with a uh, cart full of Lysol, Clorox wipes, hand sanitizer, and toilet paper. And I was done. I just said, that's it. Dude, you realize there are people who need this, that need it more than you. What are you doing? You're hoarding. This is why we can't have good things. Why are you doing this? And the man's like, yeah, yeah, I get it. Can I go back to restocking the shelves? Now, I said that recently, and now if, you know, if that was something that happened just recently, you'd be like, Pastor, you need a longer vacation. Um, because we're back. But I mean, about a year ago, let's face it, that was something we dealt with, right? You know, we discovered why there was such a problem with toilet paper. One person would sneeze and 100 people would need to change their underwear. You know, it just, you know, people were afraid. There was all kinds of crazy things going on. But just imagine what it would have been like, what my witness was to that person. How it would have been received. Now, would it make a difference if I was saying I was in a collar? Or if I was dressed like you are? Would it make a difference? Here's the thing, folks, it shouldn't. So as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Your witness is something that is important. What you proclaim, what you portray, what you embody speaks volumes. It's been said that you may be the only Bible some person ever reads. We're called to let our light so shine before others that it may see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. And at no point in that, in showing the light, is there room for dousing someone else's. Just not. But that's our baptismal challenge, isn't it? To let our light so shine before others that they may see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. And if we think we do it by ourselves, we are sadly mistaken. And so let's remind ourselves of how we best can fulfill that challenge by reminding ourselves of the gifts and promises that come to us first in baptism. And so I invite you to repeat after me these promises of God to you made in holy baptism. I've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. I've been marked with the cross of Christ forever. I am Christ's. So again, when you think about what you do, realize whose you are as a starting point. You are Christ's. You are an ambassador. You are to go forth and show. Now, let's take a moment here and think about, you know, good old Thomas here. There, I mean, poor Thomas gets a bad rap throughout the Gospel of John. We can have our own little Bible study on that whole thing. Um, you know, what, what's going on with Thomas in the Gospel of John, uh, but we can ignore that for this point in time. I guess for me, one of the big questions is, why did Thomas not accept the testimony of the other disciples? Why did he look at them and go, no, nah, I don't believe it? Was it because of the fact that he knew that these guys were hiding in a locked, darkened room behind the furniture? Sure, you saw Jesus. Right. Is that it? Again, some of the things that people know about us and what we do sometimes challenge our testimony, our witness to people. Is that it? Is it, you know, Thomas just not believing? We call, he, the guy gets called Doubting Thomas for a reason. But any way you slice it, Jesus does appear again. And he comes to, uh, he comes to him and the disciples again, again, in a locked, behind a locked door. Doesn't seem at least that they turned off the lights this time. And presented himself once more with this very important message. Peace be with you. 
Notice how many times Jesus says, peace be with you. You'd almost think that might be something that we should take as an example of what our witness and testimony might be to the world. Right? Peace. Now, some of you are going, wait a minute, Pastor, we're Lutherans. What's this witness and testimony stuff you're talking about? We don't do that. You know, can anyone give me a witness? I saw nothing. I saw nothing, you know. But maybe that's because oftentimes we think of the phrase witness and testimony in some kind of huge life-altering experience. Some major, and I saw the clouds parted and the light came down and the voice came and I shook. That can happen. But also, what about the witness and testimony of that gift that Jesus told these disciples? Peace be with you. What if it's just the simple understanding of the presence of God in your life in a tough time? And maybe your opportunity to be that presence of God's love to someone else in a tough time. Witness and testimony does not necessarily refer to talking. It means that you are showing that there is something more. Just as Jesus did. Peace. Peace. We see this gift of love that comes to us in a form that should also tell us something about how it's going to work for us. I mean, in a simplistic sense, we, we take a look at the fact that as, you know, as it says here, blessed are those who have not seen yet believe. Let's face it, folks, we're 2,000 years after the fact. We are in that crowd of those who have not seen and yet believed. But somewhere, somehow, someone along the way gave us a witness, gave us a testimony, showed us there was something more, showed us that there may be truth to the fact that I am Christ's that I'm part of the family of God, that I have value, that my life was worth the life of the Son of God. And in many ways, if you stop and think about it, many of those things, you might have to think about it real hard. Again, it's that kind of subtle testimony that most of us have, that gift of love or experience, someone who invested in you of their time, their talent, their treasure even. Something that showed that you were of value, which reminded you that you were of ultimate value. Child of God. Again, that's a witness that we can give to someone else in all different kinds of ways. Pastor, give us examples. No! Stop and think in your own life. But also here, think about the fact that if you say you're sealed by the Holy Spirit, that God's got you. That's faith, not knowing what you're going to do well ahead of time. It's trusting in the fact that God has got you and is with you. And in all honesty, as you're engaging with someone else in whatever situation it is, you're there with Christ. You're not doing it alone. Sometimes those times when you're struggling and you're not entirely sure what to do, that feeling of peace is a reminder that, again, you're not doing it alone. Sometimes you might have to remind yourself, peace, peace. In a world that wants to tear itself apart in divisions and rivalries, that wants to belittle and demean and, you know, own and destroy and trigger Think of what that testimony is towards. And in all honesty, that testimony is why, as we look at all of the numbers and all of the studies that talk about the rise of the nuns, you know, which religious affiliation are you? None. As Barna and Pew Research have discovered, most of the nuns are actually duns because of something that was done to them by someone of faith. And that was the testimony they received of what God was like and what God was to be about. 
peace be with you in those things. Trust that God will provide. Faith that God will provide in various ways. I mean, there's the whole story about the woman out in the middle of nowhere whose car breaks down and she's praying to God, I, I need help, send me an angel. And these two guys drive up on these huge Harleys, the leathers, and they got tattoos and everything else like that. They go over and need help. It's like, yeah, you know, the car's broken. And they go, no problem. They start working on it. And she's going, thank you, Lord. Thank you for sending me nice people to care for me. And they're like, nice. We got out of prison yesterday for car theft. Oh, thank you, God. Not only did you send angels, but you sent professionals. Yeah, sometimes that witness and testimony is going to come to us from a strange, strange place, including us. That body that brings testimony, including ours, might be a bit battered. Think about the lesson today. Jesus appears. Here's the wounds. Here's the gash. You can pretty much guess that across the back is all of the damage caused by the flogging, that the scalp and the head is still you know, ripped to shreds from that crown of thorns. This is the image. I mean, think about it. Jesus appears in their midst in a form that would put most Walking Dead shows to shame. Maybe that's why I said, peace be with you. But that battered body reminds us of the fact that our battered bodies are what carries this message. That it isn't just, it's not everything's just all pretty and made up and everything's lovely. There are times when, let's face it, your hair might not be done when you're giving a testimony. One of the benefits of my life is I don't ever have to worry about that. You know, you may not be feeling that you're up to it. You may not feel qualified. Again, the Holy Spirit is going to be there with you. You may not feel like you can do it all. But that's the point. You don't have to. You let the light shine. You're not the one who has to shine the light. You just let it. And we're going to screw it up. There's going to be times when it's going to get battered and bruised. There's times, and let's face it, we're wounded healers. But sometimes the best, you know, the best people that come and walk with us in those times in life are the people who have been there and done that. And have the marks and the scars. That doesn't mean that you had to have in order to be helpful. We are still sent. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Peace be with you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, we have the opportunity and the need to be people of peace, to show that there is hope, that there is this thing called new life. And new life isn't going to be pretty all the time. Heck, it often isn't. But that new life is still there. So there's another opportunity. There's a new day, a new opportunity, a new chance, a new hope. All because of the gift of love and service and sacrifice as we are marked with that cross of Christ forever. That reminder of the fact that it is love that takes death and turns it into life. And it was this battered body that showed us this way. And we are called to take up our cross and follow, to continue to let that light so shine before others, to continue to rise up day after day and opportunity after opportunity, showing love and hope to be a person of peace, letting light shine, being people of compassion and mercy. In other words, all of those things that Jesus witnessed and testified to us. May we receive that testimony, and may we see the opportunity to be that witness to the world so that they may know grace, which we here, beautiful Savior, say involves generosity, 
reaching out advocacy, compassion, and encouragement. But it starts with grace. And it's all grounded in the love of Christ. And so may you remember that gift of baptism that was given to you, those promises that were given to you, that the Holy Spirit is with you, that you're marked with the cross of Christ forever, that you are Christ's. And then may you go forth and share that message with the world, with the people you are. As in the, in the prayer of the day, it says, show us by the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. May that be true. But may you remember, first and foremost, that God loves you, and so do I. Amen. invite you to join me as we confess the faith of the church through the words of the apostles creed our baptismal creed i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth i believe in jesus christ god's only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we come to the prayers of the church, we lift up those prayer requests that we receive in various forms in different ways throughout the week. Um, and so um, as we prepare our hearts for prayer, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Let my prayer rise up. 
up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. For all of those needing health and healing, especially Dan, Mary, Frank, Barbara, Vi, Loretta, Hydrin, Eric, Ryan, Debbie, George, Jen, Tammy, Jerry, Jasmine, Linda, Donna, Julie, Jean, Connie, Russell, Barbara, Sarah, ML, Connie, Matthew, Olivia, Ann, GC, the family of baby Roland as he is in hospice, and the two of the great grandkids of Brenda who have contracted COVID. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to For all of those dealing with cancer, especially George, JR, Heidi, Susan, Barb, Shirley, Jim, Lana, and Sherry. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting of as an offering to you. For all first responders, healthcare workers, those who care for others, especially the very most vulnerable amongst our group. We lift up Allison, Brianna, Aaron, Christine, Greg, Cara, Betsy, Jennifer, PJ, Aaron, Lindsay, Matthew, Randy, Colin, Mike, Emma, Samantha, Michelle, Susan, Sarah, Erica, Rachel, Linda, Nancy, Mark, and Josh. O Lord, hear our prayer. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you. The lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. For all those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Marge Dykeman, Roger Corsmo, Christian So, Jim Sullivan, Roy Tucker, Daniel Pacheco, for the half a million plus who died of COVID in the US and three million worldwide, but also for all who mourn for whatever reason, as this time makes things so much more difficult to comfort one another. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you. an offering to you. For all those facing tragedies, near and far, man-made and natural, big or small, we pray for all of those recovering from various natural disasters worldwide, for the people of Myanmar, the political unrest that is there. For our neighbors of the First Nation dealing with poverty and pandemic, for those with health concerns that make this time more scary and those in poor health, for those feeling alone and isolated and maybe even more so because of the current situation, for those facing housing, food, health care, and financial insecurity and the struggle of finding jobs and good paying jobs and balancing that out against possible exposure to themselves and loved ones, for families in crisis, probably even more so with the extra stress. For strength for the journey, 
knowing that we may be in the same storm, but we're not in the same boat, and some don't even have one. How might we care for one another? For those who are known only to God that are on our hearts right now, for a quick and safe distribution of vaccines, and for care and concern of all. Lord, hear our prayer. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of life, and most importantly, the gift of new life, the gift of again, a gift of do over and try again, and the ability and the strength to rise again in the newness of life, to proclaim love and light and peace and hope. Give thanks for all who have given in various ways, in various places, but especially for the Paz Cafe collection and all the lives that'll be touched from there, for the Interfaith Community Service Food Pantry Food Drive that we're doing and all of the people who will be ben who benefit from that, for the stuff for the lot and, uh, and, and uh, youth on their own and all the different ways in which we rise again in hope in such a way that we give witness to the fact that there is a God and he comes to bless and often through us. But we give thanks for just the simple gift of life, for another trip around the sun for some. And so we celebrate the birthdays of Karen Martin, Jim Gracer, Paula Alden, Jordan Anderson, Olivia Siles, and Bill Letmoden. And all of those other signs of life, all those other reminders of joy and hope, we give you thanks. And we, give, and we ask that you continue to strengthen us in proclaiming the good news in word and deed, so that all may know and give thanks to God through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please find ways to be a person of peace, to carry peace, to share peace in lots of ways. Here, it's easier, wave, all that kind of fun stuff. But please find a person, be a person of peace in this world. Again, you know, for those of you who are in person, the offering plates are around the corner. Uh, if you'd like to give to, you know, Paz Cafe, there's the jar that's in the narthex. Um, you know, so, uh, Thank you, we still receive checks by mail. There's electronic giving options. One thing I wanna really uh, pitch again is it, there are lots of leftovers from the youth, gather, the youth group's virtual Easter breakfast. It was the low carb, low fat, low calorie, keto friendly virtual Easter breakfast. You know, that, you know so if, um, you know, you can, you know, in a check, you can put in the memo line. There's some stuff online, including uh, it, within the giving tabs itself. There's something there. Uh, again, this, they're raising funds because next year is National Youth Gathering in Minneapolis. So if you can help them out and enjoy some calorie and carb-free breakfast, um, they would appreciate it. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, uh, for those of you gathered here, please make sure you have your communion elements handy, the prepackaged stuff. Uh, don't open it up just yet, but when you do, just be careful that little saran thing, you know, then, you know, as you peel that, you're not flying the wafer all over the place and you're not grabbing and getting all the way down through the foil and ending up with little fountains of grape juice. Um, you know, because as we all know, grape juice is fun to get out of anything. For those of you joining us from uh, at home, uh, I invite you to, you know, just have those elements handy. Uh, simple plate, simple cup. 
uh, wine, grape juice, something simple, bread, crackers, something simple. Again, that last supper that Jesus had with his disciples was a full meal, and yet what he grabs to remind us of his abiding presence was the simple staple items on the table. And so it's not meant to be showy. It's a reminder that no matter what, and in the very simple, shall we say Jesus is testi testifying to us that God is present. And so, everything set, let us begin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Gathered around the throne of grace, let we proclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, dear Lord, as we celebrate this gift of life, this gift of new life, this gift of life that comes to us through a sacrifice, through an act of love that was without bounds and without conditions, that was about who we are because of who Christ is. And so we receive this gift to remember what love can do. It can conquer even death. And so we remember on the night in which our Savior was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it and broke it, gave it for us to eat and said, take and eat all of you. This is my body. It's broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it for all the drinks, saying, take and drink. This cup contains the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So may we receive this gift of love. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, may we be strengthened, rise up in newness of life, in the hope of the resurrection, in the love of Christ, go forth and proclaim Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, dear Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to his table. Come eat and be satisfied. Uh, for those of you who are here, again, be careful as you, you know, take and eat and all that. Um, you know, if you're with someone else and you wish to share and take turns giving and receiving, I invite you to do that. For those of you joining us at home, if you're with someone else and you can take turns giving and receiving, I encourage you to do that. If you are not with someone else and you think that you're all alone, remember that the communion of, you know, the great communion of the church, the cloud of witnesses, the communion of saints, you know, the body of Christ is gathered. Christ himself is truly present. And so the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, take and eat, take and drink, these gifts given for you. To the depths of the sea, creations revealing your majesty. From 
the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature unique in the song that it sings, all exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky, and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All-powerful, untamable, awestruck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing, God. has told every lightning bolt where it should go, or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow, who imagined the sun and gave source to its light, yet conceived it to bring us the coolness of night. None can fathom, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All powerful, untamable, all struck, we fall to our as we humbly proclaim, you are amazing, God. Indescribable, uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are Thank you. Whoop. Hold on. Try that in the place where it's supposed to be. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Becky, for that. As we, again, a reminder of the different ways in which we can witness and testify, testify to one another about the goodness of God in Jesus Christ. Music is one of those ways. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Amen. Well, spring of joy, through this meal, you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Following the dismissal, we have postlude. Uh, obviously, for you gathered here, there will be you know time you can you know, sit and chat out here and have a fellowship time out here. For those of you online, you can uh, join us. You know, join and stick around for a while on Zoom, uh, so that that way you can. Uh, spend a little bit of time in fellowship if you wish. And so any way we look at it, here we go. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Go in peace. Share the good news. 
Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.